Hello everyone, this is Edge with Neo News Today, bringing you an introduction to a new game that has just been launched on the Neo mainnet, Blocklords, which was the recipient of the blockchain award at the Neo Game Development Competition back in 2018, is a strategy game based in medieval times. It allows you to create a hero that you can then strengthen through items to improve your chances of winning in battle. Following an initial launch on the Tron blockchain, Blocklords has now launched its Neo-based version following a few weeks of testing through June. The game is accessed using the DAPI offered through the O3 wallet, so you will need the O3 wallet to get started. You can download that from the O3 website, we'll link it in the description. Just pick the version you want to use based on your operating system and then create or import a new wallet. All actions in Blocklords are handled using gas as the currency, so you'll need to load up with some gas before you get started. Creating a character currently costs 3 gas, which can only be done once per address. There are also gas fees attributed to each type of battle, and also when you list items for sale on the market there is also a gas fee. Alright, time to get started. The first thing you'll need to do after clicking play is select your hero. You'll get three randomly generated choices and it costs three gas to register them. As with all the other game transactions, this process is handled via a prompt from the O3 wallet. So you can verify and approve the transaction after you've made your choice and then sit back and wait for the confirmation. For this account, I'm going to pick Wilford because he has some pretty good average stats. Uh, keep in mind, this is actually on the test net, so this isn't the main net version, although they are pretty much identical at this point. Before we dive into the game, this is a good chance to cover what these stats actually mean and how they are increased. So the five stats in Block Lords are Intelligence, Leadership, Speed, Defense and Strength. Intelligence determines how quickly the hero can recover his troops. This stat is increased by the equipped helmet. Leadership determines the number of troops he actually has available and this is impacted by the body armor. Speed is tied to the equipped gauntlets and is used to calculate how many attacks you will get in each battle. Strength and defense are determined by the sword and shield respectively, and these determine how much damage you deal or receive. These stat increases are tied to the item level, so a level 1 item provides a plus 1 increase, whereas a level 5 item produces an extra plus 5 bonus. When you first start out, you're only going to have common items with low stats. These stats can then be increased by fighting bandits, but only up to a certain item level depending on the item quality. Winning in a bandit fight rewards 2 XP points to one of your random items. Losing a battle provides 1 XP point. All these battles with bandits cost 0.5 gas each. There are 5 item qualities. Common, Special, Rare, Epic and Legendary. And these correspond to a max item level of 3, 5, 7, 9 and 10 respectively. Higher quality items are dropped via strongholds which can then be purchased or sold in the city markets. These items are created in generations, we'll leave a link outlining these generations and how all that works in the description. Okay, I think that's enough preparation, let's head out onto the map and fight our first bandit. This guy seems a little bit weaker than me, so let's try our luck and give him a fight. Once again, you'll see the O3 prompt popping up when I go for attack, asking for approval. After a short wait, we can see the results of the battle. We ended up victorious, granting 2 XP to a random item, in this case my helmet. This was enough XP to increase the level of my helmet, so you can see my intelligence stat has increased from 21 to 22. You can also see that I did lose some troops in this battle. Now I could wait for them to recover, but that's no fun, let's risk a defeat just to see how that works too. This time we'll attack a stronghold. This guy has many more troops available, so the odds are pretty low that I come out victorious. Stronghold battles cost 0.75 gas each, and every 800 blocks, one high quality item will be dropped to a random stronghold owner. Winning this fight would make us the lord of the stronghold. Unfortunately, as expected, we lost. Let's take a quick look at a city before we wrap it up. Cities come in three different types, villages, towns, and cities. You can tell the difference based on their appearance on the map. Cities get a defender's advantage in fights depending on the size of the city, which seems to correspond to a bonus to the number of troops they have. Now it costs 1 gas to attack a city, but if you win the battle you become the city lord, able to station your troops there to defend it. 50% of the attack fees on a city and 10% of the item fees sold in the city market are placed into the city coffers, 
which are then dropped to the City Lord every 15,000 blocks. So if you're gonna go ahead and become a City Lord, you wanna try hold on to your rule as long as possible so that you can get that gas drop. Now having a little look over here, we've discovered that the town of Metz has been left undefended with only one troop out of the maximum 4,000. Even our weakened army can win that fight, so let's go ahead and attack. For only nine casualties, we've won and become Lord of this city. If we remain Lord of Metz in time for the next coffer payout, we'll receive a portion of the gas in the coffers. All right, so that should be everything you need to know to get started in Block Lords. Hope you've all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in game.